new system happening here now. More concerned, maybe. And uh, I'm hoping that you can see me. Debbie Hutchinson, you can see me. Am I the right way round? Because the writing isn't. I've got my iPad. Let me find my... Hello, hello, hello. Is it working all right? Morning, you need to turn your iPad round. You are kidding me. This isn't going to work. Bugger. I've set it all up so that it would work that way. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do that. I'll try. Well, at least I started early. Honestly, it was absolutely perfect. Everything was working great. Right, you're gonna have to bear with me, as they say. Okay. Lock your screen so it doesn't rotate. Hi, the sound's better. That's better, I won't get a quick. So it's working now. Right, well you can see me, but I'm not at all sure how I'm going to um, tip it so you can see the painting. I had it. Sound test, give us a tune. No, I think you might be able to change the settings so you can rotate the camera. I thought I had everything perfect, but I didn't have... The problem is you can't do a test live video. You can only test it on yourself. Um, what I am going to do is try and rig something. Luckily, I've got loads of bulldog clips and elastic bands. So I will try and do it so that you can see the painting when I do that. And see. Whoops. Right. I'm going to show you the arrangement. Two joinery clamps. And then I had this so that everything would work horizontally, but it's not flipping well. It's not working horizontally. Just give me, give me a second. Um, broadcast does get interrupted, but can hear you great. Very, very innovative. Uh, everybody's watching while I try and work out some way. some way of rigging up the iPad so that you can see the paintings as well once I get on. Oh, like I say, I had it all so perfect. Right, hold on one sec. I'm just going to get some more elastic bands live video interrupted now sounds great can see here every huff and puff thank you very much you'd be cross i spent ages rigging this thing up just a moment many elastic bands many bulldog clips So I just need to rig up a way whereby, I'm sorry about this folks, 
I hope you find it amusing rather than just annoying. Okay, I've got practically every sticky advice known to... Um, uh, what's the over there? I've got just about every type of sticky thing known to man. Because when I do trade fairs or Christmas shows, sorry about that, there must be a filter on, as you look really pretty today. Mm, why, thank you, Jules. Um, right. And then, I think, if I get this meat hook... That's too tight. Sorry. A slight adjustment. Hey, I think that's going to work. <laughs> the things you do for your worldwide fans. I know, I feel like giving in, actually. Um, what I'll do is I'll get everything ready. Incidentally, while I am getting ready, I mean, I could just like hold a board here and do painting there. I wouldn't care. I had ideas for today. I even had the, um, I even had the broadcast look on my own phone so that I could see what you're saying. The phone was a defective mic. Right, so there we are, I can see you. With the sound off. Right, so I'll just show you. That's what I've been working on. I'm gonna take it away now. And oh, put it somewhere. because that is that's like the biggest size painting that one can actually work at Do you know I could do I could paint like like that maybe good morning are those big huge drawers in the back you can see my big huge drawers ah oh, for the watercolor paper this, this whole building here is entirely for me. This is like my studio, gallery, mezzanine office, store cupboard, kitcheny bit, just there with the big painting. And there are two sets of plan chests. Sorry about that. The one that you can see behind me has got... Um, I shouldn't be telling you, it's a secret one. It's got my prints in. And there's another one, which is an old wood uh, oak plan chest and that's got very very secret things in it's got cellophane bags i keep my my walk my paper in there um it's also the place where i keep my originals that aren't framed yet but don't tell anyone so yeah one day we'll do a tour in the meantime, I thought we would add a little bit to the ducks painting that we did some stuff. Huge cocks, I know. Uh, I thought we would also do a little bit more to the sheep one that we started yesterday. Now then, when I came back from my walk, I didn't have a swim last night because um, I thought I'd vary things. I went for a five mile walk instead and saw like mallards, um, herons, um, those things with big beaks that go ee, oyster catchers, um, goosanders again, and uh, the mandarin ducks I was telling you about. It, it's just like, it's like going on a nature walk. Um, maybe do a tiny bit more to this one as well. Maybe do something to this piece of paper too. Oh, I know what I thought would be nice. Let's do a little bit more here. I've also 
got because um, painting still lives is really, really good. You've got something in front of you that broadly sits still, and I've got an orange, an apple, a lemon, and some bananas there. If I try and tip you round, I can hear your session about chickens in the background. Are you serious? It's all a plan, so you get the latest iPhone. I don't know. This one I actually bought myself, so it's very, very annoying to think I might have to. Um, I might have to buy anything else, basically. Right. I'm going to try and tip you up so I can start doing some painting. Hey, Katie Weatherhead, good sound today. Yay. Thank the Lord for that. And look here, I can see your comments when I tip you up, so don't think I can't see what, you see, what you're saying. Right. Here we go. Actually, what I might do is get a few of my meat hooks, so then... That's quite good, you can see. Blimey. I think it is. Right. While I can see what's actually going on, I put my glasses on and very, very quickly do a little bit to this. Get my paints over here. That's better, isn't it? That's better, isn't Whoops. it? Whoops, I don't need that. Right. That's better, isn't Whoops. it? Whoops, I don't need that. I do not need the volume from the other phone. Right, so I'm just going to try and mix up a green a little bit like this and then this like magic um, effect where's the flower gone ah they've all they've all opened up so I can't see very well that they so the purple and green together is just quite incredible on these black parrot Tulip buds, I think it is. I think it's really, really lovely. Grown by Kate, um, we call her Flower Girl, Catherine Norris, Kate Norris from Wark, uh, and her company, Northumbrian Flowers. She, she, she's got some absolutely beautiful tulips that she's growing at the moment. And as I mentioned before, she supplied me with these. Um... Just like those two colours, I think are magic. Can you see? Yeah, there. Where is my little piece for doing tests on? Oh dear.
just sort of picking out any of the little the little white leftover areas with this quite nice green uh, which makes a lovely contrast and yeah it might not be exactly where the green is but as far as the eyes concerned you, you you've got those you've got those bits of green so you know quite nice design wise obviously obviously I, I can't kind of um, like do a big big painting uh, in front of you so every day I try and maybe follow on a little bit from one we've done before or start something new but you see if I was to do you know that like that big one behind the the chances of me making uh, like an irrevocable like mistake while I'm you know painting on video is quite high because um, my priority is to like enthuse and to try to show you like simple techniques and fun ways of applying colour rather than just like boringly watching me plod through a painting that really it requires all my um, all my attention. Sorry about that. How's your little dog doing? Oh, Debbie, attacked by a badger. Um, our little dog's fine. He's putting on a bit of weight, which is great. He's on, as I said, he's on four units of insulin at the moment. Um, he's not coming on like the big five mile walks, but uh, he did a couple of miles the other day. No problem at all. So I just don't want to have to carry him home, even though he's as light as a feather. I know. I hope your little dog gets... Your dog's poorly as well. Too much barbecue. Too much having fun. <laughs> Hi, Liz Johnson. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased you can see. Right. Now that this marvellous system is working, let's... Let's add a little bit to this painting here. I'm just going to have to move it over. I don't... Is that, is that okay? Yes-ish. I'm just sort of picking out the nostrils and the eye um, and then I'm going to add some more depth to the rushes here, <laughs> pushing my paint further and further over, maybe mix it, mix it in, in there. Yes, when people ask me about my greens, as you can see, I'm, I'm kind of picking up colour from all of these palettes to try and try and create a green but I'm wanting something a bit bluer than these ones because these ones are going to be the ones I'm about to paint now are in the background <gasps> my tea my tea right So I'm giving an impression of a sort of undergrowth, like layers of layers of uh, whatever these are, rushes. I feel be pleased that the sound's working on this because he doesn't like it when it doesn't work and he hasn't listened to the last few wifey telly as he calls it because the sound is so crap his words so Jules how are you today I know you're really missing your swimming what do you do if you have an irrevocable mistake? 
A large favour, would you ever concede to a body wash? What, like, in front of you all? As a, as a, as a sort of penitential thing? Certainly not. To be honest, there's no such thing as an irrevocable mistake. Um, but I, I like everything to just flow and work well. And if I stick to that rule, it does tend to. Uh, I wouldn't want to sort of, yeah, I wouldn't like things to, to go tits up in front of, well, full stop. That's an English expression, Beth. Now, Beth, who has just been commenting, is from America. And Beth Munning's winter, I've made a few, boy, I bet. Uh, Beth Munning's winter is related to the great Munnings. Now then, quite a lot of the people watching now um, are familiar with the work of Munnings and his amazing horses and his like, hunting paintings uh, and I believe we have a particularly fine one in the Laying Art Gallery in Newcastle but the, unfortunately because Munnings is so uh, uh, what's the word unpopular they just don't really get it out very often and yeah Beth's related to him how about that and she comes over to the UK quite often but not this year obviously and she is friendly with an aunt by marriage of mine, Joy. And she's an artist. She's an amazing artist. You should go to her website or her Facebook page, Beth Munnings Winter. Sorry, I, uh, it is slightly, slightly tricky concentrating on one's thread whilst one is painting. But not impossible. Um, Mary, I really love a Munnings. I knew you would. Munnings, wow. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I knew you would. You see, Beth? Lots of Munnings lovers. Right, so we've got two ducks and just the three legs. Look at that, Warriors. So it's quite nice. I quite like the way it's... I might just put that to one side for now and we'll have a little look at something else. What about the swale day that we started the other day? And we started it, for those of you who weren't here, oh. okay, we can use this. We started it like this by just getting... A very, very pale, this is called a wash. So that would be the... Uh, 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 uh. Oh. I'm just doing a quick catch up here for those of you who are late to the party of Swaledaleness. Can you see it? There. So this is like... I'm leading you on to, you know, here is one I've done earlier. Not have to worry too much about the colour. There's the horn. <gasps> Paint on my sleeve again. And... Head. It's a swale dale, you probably guessed, which is what I am surrounded by in the fields here. Really, really love them. Just, and I'm so lucky to be able to 
help out now and again. I help out during lambing time and I help out during um, when they clip them as well. I usually help with the the fleeces, um, like folding them up and stuffing them into the into the sacks. And then at the uh, at what we call the back end, the autumn, when so sort of getting to the oh look at that look I'll send you lot the laundry bill as if I'd ever used a laundry so uh, this is like a, a very very quick resume yeah so then the neck the, the, the shoulders and they have their little clove and hooves and then you can probably just see the back one as well right so we've kind of quickly done a like a resume which I'll chuck to one side. And then yesterday, trying to work out where's the best place to put it. Uh, yesterday, we we put a bit of background and we talked about stone walls before and we can quite easily make this look a bit more like a stone wall. Like pick out the stonework. Right, what are you saying, you lot? Jan's watching. Sally Robinson, Diana Beaumont's watching. Hello. After it sounds much better, I will have to go back and catch up afterwards. Uh, Ian, this is the iPad. Yeah, I definitely think that my, my iPhone has become defective. I'm thinking it might even be because uh, because I used it quite a long time like, attached to a lamp with bubble wrap behind to sort of clamp the phone to. And because they've got three microphones and the brain on the iPad probably didn't, didn't like the bubble wrap there. Um, so it switched to another one and anyway... There's a chap called Jacob who watches this and his son uh, used to sell phones and stuff and we've been having a conversation about what's probably gone wrong with the iPhone. Anyway, I have, I bought, I bought my iPhone about, probably about five or six years ago outright. It was an iPhone 6S Plus, 64 gigabyte and I really like the size of it because obviously I'm looking at images a lot and I'm sending images so, and, and also I, I just would never put my phone in my pocket it's just not how I it's not how it, it's not how things work around here I don't really wear jeans so I don't have a pocket so a big iPhone was great for me so this is quite boring I think but Again, it's that one of those sort of jigsawy things that's quite quite nice to do. So that's like you know a bit of wall there. Um, now the sheep's head needs to be much darker because the it's not a Scotch blackface; it is a Swaledale, but but the the um that's much darker where is my Payne's gray there it is Payne's gray the nearest thing to black So that's the lovely thing about watercolour. There is a translucency to it, but um, you know you can you can paint over a wash very successfully. So 
anybody got any questions? Anything they'd like to ask or to say? Let me have a little look. Oh, of course I can. No, I can't look on there. I thought I could. Hey, do have such, such lovely textures. I think they were James Herriot's favourite breed. Maybe they... Oh, um, Marianne Ray. Well, who does like being wrapped up? Mm, how many paintings do you have on the go at any one time? Good question, Sally Wright. Well, um, it depends what size they are, really, Sally. Um, so, for instance, that one behind me there that you may have seen, it, it, that it's at a stage now where it's going to be you know, it, there's quite a lot more work to do in it. Um, and I would say, you know, once I started that painting, that one there, which is over a metre wide and about 90, 85 centimetres deep, that, that painting will just take all my time for maybe a week or two or, or more. But if I was doing, say, smallish paintings of different light Sussex, oops, um, like maybe uh, maybe I'd have one on the go, or maybe a pair, like a hen and a cock, um, or a group, I might start one and then another and then another, go back to the first one, um, as I would with, you know, the black parrot tulips, because I've got a very limited window of opportunity while they are while they're flowering same with landscapes this one is uh, at, a, at a, a stage where i can do more to it but i did start another one at the same time in front of you so it depends really it depends how how big the painting is um and because i'd be working with the same color palette usually i mean this is a hell of a mess here but usually i'd be working uh, with one colour palette, so it makes sense to use all the colours that I've prepared. Uh, right, I'm just going to use this Chinese brush with this dreadful, disgusting end, because it, it's perfect for doing fleece. You get a very, very... I'll just try and show you here. You get a, you get a, like a very lovely, sort of hairy fleecy type of effect, see? Which works perfectly for sheep. And I'm going to do a little bit more down here. Yeah, I don't think anybody heard much of what was said yesterday, but uh, and I did play a bit of it back, and it, it seemed to go completely dead, where I was explaining about the situation with my mum, who is in her 80s, and she's in Newcastle, which isn't that far away, and she's sort of fairly gung-ho about, about the current restrictions, and her family are a little bit unsure what to do. There are some factions who think that it's okay to go and visit her, even though she does have my brother staying with her at the moment. And then there are other factions who, who don't. It's, it's causing a little bit of dissent. I personally think each person has to make their own decision and do what they think is right for them and not be pressurised. But I think it's very, very difficult for, situ for, for people. I, I, I actually don't think my mum is in a particularly difficult situation, but for, for people who are, you know, in, in a town or in a situation where they don't have a whole lot of space or fields or garden, I think it's very, very difficult for them. And I'm afraid I take a very sympathetic view to the ones who think, well, we'll go and have, we'll just have a, go somewhere really nice and quiet, we'll go for a drive, and we'll be able to just have a walk by ourselves. Um, and inevitably, wherever they get to, every, everyone else has had the same idea. And I completely see both sides of that.
Any more questions? Tracy Turner. The countryside looks like where I got lost. <laughs> ah! <gasps> That's my sort of cousin who, oh, I don't know, only second cousin removed in Australia. We tried to remove you, but it just didn't work. Anyway, um, so that's Robin and her friend Davina came and stayed here. Is that Hadrian's Wall behind the sheep? No, it's not, but there is a Roman fort just opposite. Anyway, so Robin, who has been chipping in there, she came here with her friend a few years ago. Oh, gee, it's lovely round here. We'd love to go for a walk. If we go for a... Yes, we'll take you for a walk. So we dropped them off somewhere. We gave them a map. Oh, gee, we're walking on the Roman Wall. And, and so we walk from wherever it was we dropped them, which was up near um, Stonehof, I think, or along the Ward Lane anyway. And the plan was that they would, uh, that they would literally walk in a straight line heading south uh, and they would hit the Roman wall, go along for a bit and then stay at the Twice Brood or something. Anyway, so we dropped them off with maps, discussed everything. All, everything was looking good. And then we got this pathetic phone call a few hours later. They literally ended up exactly where they'd set off from. Because they are a pair of simpletons from Australia and they must have got confused with the whole south thing north south then maybe their maps are the other way up or something not quite sure so it's beginning to get a little bit more depth to the painting I hope you can see. I agree too. Good, Jenny. Great Aussie accent, Marianne. Why, thank you, Beth. They were on a walkabout. Simpletons, yes. And what's more, Robin, I would say that to your face, as you know. Actually, Robin came to the Scottish Game Fair. Her trip to Europe and also to the UK coincided with the Scottish Game Fair at Schoon in, you know, in Perthshire. And uh, so I thought, oh, you know, Robin, I, I feel so guilty that when you're here, this, um, this thing's on, I explained what it's like, oh, gee, I'd love that. I could, I'd be great at that. And uh, so she came with us and stayed in the caravan with us. And she's literally... She makes the Duracell bunny look laid back. She was hilarious. We were crying with laughter. From the moment she woke up in the morning and went on a, went running around the racetrack at, at Perth Races, you know, that was her idea. Start the day, you know, run off a bit of excess energy. Like that worked. Um, and then, so we, I had a stand there, which was basically... You know, me trying to sell stuff. So having an Australian, a hyperactive Australian on the team, you know, it could have been a disaster. But it wasn't. She was brilliant. She was really, really good fun. And we sent her on some good long walks. And um, it was a disaster that she couldn't come and help out last year as well. Just putting a shadow under the wall there because... That's where you get your shadows. And you know what? Because, as you all know, I'm a bit obsessed with ridge and furrows. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pretend that it's a sort of evening. Sort of landscape. This will mean nothing to you Australians or Americans. But in many, many years gone by, this whole area uh, was not all sheep farming. Uh, and possibly the climate was better, but they used to plough these hills here, where they certainly don't anymore. And the remains of these plough lines are called ridge and furrow. And, and you can still see them on the landscape, which is just lovely. And in the evening, when I come back from my long walks... 
the sun picks out these peculiar stripes. Can you see okay? I know you. We had poor directions given. No. No, Robin, you didn't. We told you exactly where to go. It was perfect. I feel she's about to take the milk. Ah, there's Davina. I can't believe it. Jean Cole's watching. Hello, Jean. Have the licorice all sorts arrived? They should have. Got them. Ah, oh, excellent. And Jean, I promise I didn't lick them. Or touch them with my fingers. Or sneeze on them. This is very, very self-indulgent. I really love these sort of landscape type. Now, I'm going to do something now, which is like a secret thing that I do. And if any of you copy it, I'll have to come around and kill you. Um, I don't believe. <laughs> right. I do this thing sometimes because it's all looking a little bit too. It's just looking a tiny bit too natural. And sometimes, oh, last night, what was the sunset like last night? We looked out, we sat at our table eating our pauper's food, which is basically what we're eating. We're eating fodder potatoes from the farm next door and salad, which we're growing ourselves now in the polytunnel. And we looked out and there was like an unnatural pink, pink haze on the horizon. Uh, where I look south to is a village called Ridsdale. Now, no offence to people who live there, but why would you? except that you get an extra half hour of sun in the evenings. And so over Ridsdale, there was this just amazing fuchsia sun. Uh, right, I am going to do a thing, and it's just like sort of picking out areas. That have been left white. Ah, oh, look, it's going all over me. This is why I should just stick to grey. And it's just a sort of, I don't know, it's just a thing. It's just because it's all looking a little bit, a little bit like, uh, not perfect, but natural. And I quite like to just get this. It's it's like, you know, a pop of colour, I suppose that's what people say. And you do get this effect um, when the sun is setting, you sometimes get some really quite startling, startling colour going on. Um, <gasps> look at the time, Jules, you never said anything. I rely on you to help me. I'm just going to do something there as well. Again, it's like not a mixed colour, it's just straight out of the palette, but quite good fun. Um, I'm just going to do something to that horn. Get a very pointy brush. I must say, I feel a lot more relaxed knowing that you can see me and you can hear me. I found yesterday and the day before very, very, very upsetting. Mm -hmm. Confess, Swaledale as a landscape wasn't my favourite, but you've made a pop. Thank you. You have already given that secret away last week and we've all copied it. Well, I will just come and kill you individually. You could make a smock with the style that I wanted. I was looking at another live video at the time. I've got a little message for you, Jules. It's just for you. Just for Jules, not for anyone else. Right. Oh, 
Oh, my tummy's starting to rumble. I need to go and get my packet soup. Unfortunately, they didn't have any asparagus in the village shop. So I've got a fairly uninspiring vegetable packet soup. Uh, and there's another one, and I can't remember what it was, but it was two packets for £1.25, which is a bargain. We are making huge savings by eating, as I say, like paupers. Um, and it's not finished, but it's quite fun. And there we end today's session. Replying to Sheila. <laughs> That's why my pheasant looks like he has conjunctivitis. I meant to finish the pheasant. I'll have to do that tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do the pheasant tomorrow. Do you ever use powdered pigment? I do not. Any other questions? Uh, don't forget to drink your tea. It's in the big glass. <laughs> yeah, well, Jules, I've got news for you. That's my left and that's my right. Ha, ha, ha. Bye, bye, bye. Bye bye. No, that's why it doesn't. Time doesn't matter. You started late with the setup. Anyway, it's been a delight, and I'm so glad it worked. Have a lovely day. Bye. Bye, Jenny. I mean, Robin. Just need to work out how to finish it. You haven't gone, have you? <laughs> right. I re this is the. Fi I found the finish button. <laughs>